It's about that time of day again. My name is Joseph. Monday evening, February the 5th. Welcome back to our nightly newsletter. We're covering crude oil, S&P, NASDAQ, gold, and of course, we can't forget about the euro this evening. Starting off tonight with crude. Crude is bearish with a big spike in channel pattern, and I have a reverse target to pinpoint the best selling opportunities tomorrow morning. The S&P is also bears the big, strong, parabolic move lower, and I'm looking for selling opportunities using one of three possible scenarios on the E-mini S&P tomorrow. Speaking of the E-minis, NASDAQ also bearish with a great example of a trend reversal. So, of course, anytime I see a trend reversal, I'm going to dig into those hidden channels for tomorrow. How about some gold? Gold is bullish, the only chart tonight that is in control of the bulls. But I'll tell you, though, listening to the story behind the gold chart today, we can easily see buyers are rejecting higher prices. So my plan is to focus on buying as low as possible. And I've got a trading range I'm watching on gold for tomorrow. Euro is bearish, but we're sitting on a key support level this evening, so I'm staying patient for more reliable selling opportunities up at the high of the range tomorrow morning. Boy, we had some big, big, did I say big, yeah, big, big moves today. That's setting up for a lot of different possible opportunities for tomorrow. We've got crude oil, S&P, NASDAQ, gold, and euro. And I got a great newsletter in store for you guys with an awesome plan setting up for Tuesday's session. Before we jump in, though, with the plan together, I do want to remind you, if you're on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to our channel. That way you never miss another newsletter video. Drop me a comment below the video on YouTube or here on the blog if you have any questions questions about anything we discuss in the video. And don't forget, if you really want to stay in tune with everything we do here at schooloftrade.com, head over here to the blog at sidewaysmarkets.com and make sure you join our mailing list. By joining our mailing list, you'll always be the first person to know whenever we put out a new video here on the blog. While you're here, don't forget, I publish exclusive content on my stock twits, Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn feeds throughout the week, right? Check out for charts, links, and updates there. Speaking of charts how easy is this all the charts from tonight's video that's right how nice is this all the charts in the video tonight you can download all of those charts have them on your computer and be ready for tomorrow's session there's a link on the blog here at sidewaysmarkets.com follow that link at the bottom of the screen there right and grab those charts for tomorrow and speaking of tomorrow what are you waiting for why haven't i seen you on the free pass yet i'll tell you right now you're going to learn more with me on that free pass than you will anywhere else on the interwebs i can guarantee you that grab that free pass come out and join me tomorrow as a guest in the trade room right and see what our strategy looks like right and see what it feels like to be a client every day in our trade room all right guys don't forget join the mailing list Drop me some comments if you have any questions here along the way, and we are off to the race this morning. Got a big, big opportunity setting up here for this week. First, though, let's jump into our news here. What do we have on the calendar here for tomorrow? Remember, professional traders don't trade the news. We trade around the news. It's not because, right, we're not here to find volatility. We're here to find reliability, right? And it's difficult to find reliability when you're looking at big major economic news numbers, right? So major news for tomorrow. Well, hold on one second. What do we have here coming in overnight? We do have some news from our good friends down under. We get the RBA announcement and retail sales. So be aware. I'm not sure how much that's going to move the needle, right? But if you happen to be watching the Aussie dollar, right? Right, or the Kiwi here overnight, right? You may see that move the needle a bit. Tomorrow, though, right, as we go into Tuesday's session, Tuesday, February the 6th, when everybody comes back after the, you know, call in sick Monday after Super Bowl weekend. Hope you guys had a great weekend, by the way. What a game on Sunday. Sad my Pats lost, but definitely what a great team they played. Holy cow. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Bottom line, though, is when everybody gets back to work, that's why the markets collapsed today, right? Everybody called in sick to work. Nobody nobody showed up. Right? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm kidding with you. Hopefully, hopefully that's the reason why. I don't think that's the reason why, though. But jumping into tomorrow's session, though, we got we get some news tomorrow morning. We got some big news tomorrow. We got the 8.30 international trade. You can see there's no news in the overnight London session. It's all kind of buried into that 8.30 time frame with international trade and merchandise trade. And then we have some minor stuff here at 10 o'clock. You know, Jolt's report is a 
big important number, but we don't usually see that much of a reaction to it. Honestly, 10 a.m. Eastern time, we call it the 10 o'clock shock. It almost always gives us a little bit of shock to the markets a little bit at 10 o'clock Eastern time. So keep an eye on that tomorrow. Outside of that news at 830, we have the opening bell, of course, for gold and currencies at 820. 9 o'clock is the opening bell on the oil and all the energy markets, right? 930 e-minis. Right? Best trades on e-minis usually come between 9.45 and 11 o'clock Eastern, so keep an eye on that tomorrow. And don't forget, everything I cover tonight, we're going to do it again tomorrow morning in our trade room. We open up at 8 o'clock Eastern time. What are you waiting for? Right? Stop stop blowing through that account by gambling. Right? Learn the right way to do this, Right, and you're going to get a great education and a great strategy every day in our trade room. Let's keep, let's keep rolling. Enough about me. Let's get you guys ready here for tomorrow. So trade room is up tomorrow, 8 o'clock Eastern time. First things first, let's get ready for tomorrow here. We got crude, S&P, NASDAQ. We'll go with some gold, and we can't forget about the mighty euro. Starting off tonight on oil, crude is bearish and trading at the low of a spike in channel pattern. That tells me to look for selling opportunities up near the highs of this channel tomorrow morning. I'm also watching a key support level down at 62.79. If you look at a, if you zoom all the way out on this chart, right, that is a major right prior swing low, and apparently my spelling on that word support is incorrect. So sorry, kids. I don't, I, I don't mean to disappoint on that spelling, but it is major support there at 62.79. Some support, if you will. Anyways, I'm going to use a, I'm going to use a a reverse target technique for a measured move and plotting the best place to sell up in that battle zone which just happens to be right below right that prior reversal line so looking at the chart here right now we spent most of the session here going sideways it was really kind of a weird start to the week you know we were coming out of last friday's non pay uh, non farm payroll number right we called this reaction monday and so we came out this morning we saw a lot of really cranky price action right big moves up big moves down big moves up big moves down so a lot of these markets in it's not just crude a lot of them began the day today pretty choppy it wasn't until the afternoon settled in volume dries up a little bit right and <laughs> as i joked around earlier right it felt like everybody kind of left the building and the markets kind of just collapsed on themselves and you can see that's exactly what happened here so we're seeing a very strong move down of course anytime we see a strong move in one direction we expect to see a pullback to the moving average and a retest of that low i'm going to take those two lows now take those two lows I'm gonna pin them at those lows and then bring them right up at that high and that will create a spike in channel now that spike in channel pattern that's the first big component of this chart in fact it's one of the only things that we know for certain right now uh, that spike in channel pattern may continue going lower here in the overnight and so we may end up you know, seeing this a little bit steeper here tomorrow, right? So I'll have to see kind of how this thing goes. But the bottom line is, as of right now, though, that spike in channel is drawn like this. And anytime we see a spike in channel, we always know, look left, find that first swing. And that's usually where you're going to find your best selling opportunities. You'll learn more about spike and channel patterns um, inside of our intermediate classes here at School of Trade. So that looks good, right? So that spike and channel looks pretty easy. Also, we have this strong move down. Anytime we have a strong move in one direction, we know that can be used as a measuring spike, right? So strong spike down, take the deepest part of the pullback, and that projects into that measured move at 62.54. Now, of course, the third thing that we know here, if I can just correct this, this is driving me nuts, my... OCD kind of kicking into high gear on this one right now, but that major low support, if you look left here at 62.79, keep going, keep going, right? There's a, a major prior low there at 62.80-ish, right? 62.79. Um, and so if we, if we kind of assume that this major support is a big target for the sellers, and I already know that I already have that big one leg down, well, we can probably reverse engineer this, figure out where they're trying to get to at 62.79, reverse engineer it, 
And that puts us right about 64.45, 64.50 area, give or take a few ticks. Okay, that's a very big clue because you'll notice where it lines up. It lines up with a beautiful naked reversal line, right? 64.52. That's a reversal. That's a prior swing low, a prior major level of support that hasn't been used as resistance yet. And so, of course, when you take that reversal line, combine that with the first pullback, that creates what I call my battle zone. Battle zones are areas of resistance in a bear market where I can get short with a small amount of risk and a big amount of reward, right? So if I can sell off of that battle zone, my risk can be, relatively speaking, smaller right, than my reward. Makes, makes pretty good sense, right? And whenever we have a good risk to reward ratio on our trade, we know that all kinds of different types of traders are going to be attracted to those opportunities. And because trading is all about that leveraging of the self-fulfilling prophecy, right? I want to be selling when everybody else is selling as well. So that will be a great spot up there from that 6422 area. I've also got one more trick up my sleeve here. If we take these highs, Right, take these highs here. This, of course, was kind of like a, a lazy bear channel. You can see that bear channel is probably not going to be in play anymore. But is there a possibility here that this could be seen? Oh, I don't know, maybe as a reversal line as well, right? A prior support level that now can be used as resistance. I would be inclined to agree. So we got a lot of, of different uh, 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 pieces to this puzzle right now. What do we know? Well, we know we have a strong move down, and we know those bears are showing strength right going lower. So we know the bears have control, right? We also can see here that at the very least, we are just below that prior low. So we know we're not seeing like we're seeing in the S&P right now, where it just keeps on going, right? We didn't get that follow through. So we know it's not, you know, well, we know it's probably not a steeper channel, right? Because that's what it would be, right? If it kept going lower like this, I would say, okay, it's going to be a steeper channel. It doesn't look like that's the case right now. So spike in channel tells me I want to be a seller up top, right? Reversal line gives me the battle zone. Swing is the battle zone, reversal, right? Reverse target gives me an area of interest, all right? I know where they're trying to go. They're trying to go down to that 79 to 54 area, maybe even lower tomorrow. So where do I want to sell? Well, when the bears have control, I always want to sell at resistance. Let's think about what if price goes higher here. Price rises higher, always want to be ready for everything, right? What if price rises higher? Two-legged pullback. Right, draw that trend line up, um, up, right up, up off the underbelly. Two-legged pullback, right into a moving average test. That moving average test coming in hot, right, failing into a pullback pattern, going right back down again. Right, so as the price goes higher, two-legged pullback, buyer failure. Anytime I go above the moving average in a bear market, looking for buyers to fail back down. And then, of course, don't forget about right that. Yep, don't forget about that selling opportunity coming off that moving average on the way back lower. You'll notice all of these cells, right, are going to come off of resistance, right? Not a good idea to get into the habit of selling at support. What if price goes sideways here? You know, there's, there's potential. There's, a, there's definitely a big move down. Um, we may end up going sideways here in the short term, right? If we do see double tops, double bottoms, in other words, if we get kind of comfortable down here going sideways, then I focus on failures, right? Focusing on failures means I want to wait for that to try rule, right? So once we see double bottoms here, okay, once you see a double bottom, that's going to be your clue. We're going sideways here. It's the, oh, the easiest clue, right? Once you see the double bottom, you know we're going right, you know, going sideways. For example, we're right, double bottom here when you were going sideways earlier on in today's session. Once we see double bottom, then we know one try, two try. Look for those selling opportunities. And again, hopefully this will come off of those levels of resistance, right? Hopefully we can find some of these levels of resistance here to use with that. One try, two try, right? Let those buyers try once. Let those buyers try twice. Once they try twice, then we'll look for that sell, right, going back down into that range. What if price goes lower here? You know, it looks like we found a bit of a, a bit of a, of a holding point here on this move lower. But, you know, hey, when we come into Asia here in a few moments, right, we might start seeing some more selling here. So what if price keeps going lower? Well, 
If price keeps going lower, let's just say, for example, a nice strong leg lower here. I'm going to grab that low again. I'm going to move it up now, right? And so that it's pretty much the same thing, right? Look at that same thing up off that high. So if we do keep going lower, I'm going to continue looking for that, right, for that spike in channel. If we run, this is very important, if we end up running down to that target, right, if we end up getting that target, in other words, if we get to the market's target before we have a chance to get in, okay, now we get to really wait for that bounce. Two-legged correction, Usually it'd be a trend line here, right? Failure, strength, pull back, right back down, right? So if this thing really runs here in the overnight session, again, we'll probably be able to use this as a larger channel, right? That's what we'll probably do, right? Run in and then we'll look for that, right? That move off from there. Again, you'll notice everything we talk about, whether price goes up, price goes down, price goes sideways, we're selling at resistance. And a lot of times, right, we're using the buyers to help fuel that move lower with buyer failures. Now, speaking of buyers, how does this market turn bullish? There are three things I look for when it comes to a trend reversal. One is strength. Two is a pullback to the moving average. Three is strength going forward. Right, so one, two, three, one strength going higher, two pulling back, right, and three moving higher. The buyers have to prove to me that they want this by exploding higher, right? That's the key, right? If you have to ask me, is this a reversal yet? It's probably not a reversal, okay? Look at how strong the market was going lower. You're going to need to see something very similar for this price to reverse directions. Okay, so remember, like, like I always say, right, you're not going to need to ask a friend if the market's reversed. When it's reversed, you're going to feel it. You're going to see it, right? It's not going to do this and just kind of creep above the moving average. No, it's going to go above the moving average, and those buyers are going to explode, right? You're going to feel it, right? It'll be pop because what's happening is, is the sellers are getting stopped out, and they become buyers as well. The sellers are walking away at that point, and anytime we have reversal – I always look for that hidden channel, right? So if we do see it strength, pull back strength, then draw up those highs, bring it down to those lows, and I'm looking for that buying opportunity. It'll usually come between the high of that move here, right, and the low of that channel, right up in there, right? That's usually where it'll end up showing up, right? That's typically where you'll find the buy opportunity there. Just don't buy high, right? Buy at support. All right, speaking of reversals, let's keep going here. Now you get the plan for the crude. And again, we'll do that crude strategy tomorrow morning in our trade room as well. How about some S&P now? Yeah, quite the day here on the S&P, right? Definitely bearish after collapsing this afternoon, getting back literally all of its gains from 2018, right? Let, 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 me, let, let me say that again. In just, in just one afternoon, right, the S&P gave back all of its gains, right, the first 35 days of the year. So 35 days walking up, right, less than a day, but a third of a day, right, literally a third of the day giving it all back, okay? So really, really strong, sharp move, right, on these E-minis right now. Now, the bears clearly have control, but the strength of this move down has me concerned. You know, we know that strong moves down like this, right, when they happen this quickly, they can move back higher just as fast as they dropped. So it's going to be important that we watch closely in the overnight session to see how they react in Asia. You know, when they come out here in Asia shortly after midnight, do they continue the bearish strength going lower? Do we pull back slowly, right? Do we go sideways? We're watching closely here to see how is the rest of the world going to react when they come in, right? When they wake up in Asia and they see, right, we're down, we're down a good five, six, seven percent, right, on the day. And that really doesn't even do it justice, right? It's looking at a chart and you look back in time and you go, holy Christmas, we are literally all the way back to the beginning of January, right? We're literally a midway of last December. So quite a bit of value has been, right, has been wiped out. Do buyers see this as being a bargain or do, or do sellers grab hold of this 
and take this thing lower. So those are the scenarios we're looking for clues. We're looking for a little bit of a tip of the hat here as we go through Asia. Now, I don't want to sell the lows. We're obviously bearish, right? There's no way to look at this market right now and think, boy, bulls have it. This is a bear market. I'm not a long-term trader. So I'm not trading a pullback on a weekly chart right now. I'm a day trader, right? That's one of the things we talk about in our beginner classes. The first thing you got to understand is what type of trader do you want to be? Are you looking for short-term trades? If you are, then you want to be using just today's information, right? You don't need to look at a daily chart. Looking at a daily chart right now for a day trader is going to mess with your head because you're going to see this is a great looking pullback on a daily chart. Okay, but the reality is, you look at a, you look inside that daily candle, and you can see these bears. They really took strong control today. So the bears have short-term control for a day trader's time frame. So I want to make sure we clarify that up, right? Now, with the bears in control, I don't want to sell the lows. But remember, this is a trend reversal, right? So as we collapse lower, the easiest way to do this is to mark up these lows and project up to that high. So I have my two lows here, right? Because if you try drawing the channel off these highs up here, you know, the channel won't even work, right? Yeah, there's definitely a channel there, but that channel's useless at this point. Now what you're going to do is take these lows. And with these lows, right, mark the highs. This one happens to work perfectly. You'll notice it lines up nicely with all these prior tests. So I'm going to leverage that reliable trend line higher and it makes sense right now that we look like we're bouncing off of that low so that tells me now i want to be up and sell at resistance right that bear channel that hidden channel right tells me we're looking for that sell off resistance we can also see a strong two-legged move right kind of that big move down right that strong move down can be used as a measuring spike and you can see that's exactly where we are right now you're going to want to use this going forward here right so if i draw kind of an arrow on here if we bounce up into that battle zone for example now i know right i can kind of reverse engineer this and now i know where the next target will be right down there that 25 70 half so depending on where we go again just kind of just just kind of doing this for illustration right now but if we pull all the way back to this 2065 area which is highly likely uh well then we know we have one leg lower two legs lower a third leg lower again we'll project off the highest part of that pullback and that will be another target for us going lower tomorrow another big clue right another big clue again as i mentioned earlier is just the sheer strength of this move whenever we make this much uh movement in one day right again gave back pretty much the whole entire well the the, the entire year's worth sounds really bad it's only february 5th for crying out loud right but because we gave back so much, because this thing's moved so well, this is a 10,000 tick chart for crying out loud, right? You can see how much I've had to slow this bad boy down to get the whole sucker in, right? To, to get it inside the uh, the screen here. Whenever we have this much move in one, right, in one fell swoop, a lot of times we end up going sideways. So I'm watching for a trading range going sideways tomorrow. This would make a lot of sense, right? So let's say, for example, we come out in Asia. Right again, give it a few hours here tonight. Right, we come out in Asia, and Asia slams right back down again. Right, Asia says the party's over. Right, we're not we're not buying this dip. Right, we're bearish. Right, they slam back down. They go back to that low, but instead of continuing lower, right, we see it bounce off that low. Right, in other words, sellers reject the idea of those lower prices. At that point, now then we have a trading range. Now, as we come into the U.S. session, imagine now coming in tomorrow morning, we had strong move down, but we're no longer making lower lows. We're not bullish yet because we haven't seen that strength, pullback strength for the buyers. So now our plan is, is to sell up around these highs. But how do we sell around these highs? Two try rule, right? It's a range. One try, two try, and failure back down. Let's get rid of this here just for illustration purposes. So if we come out tomorrow and we're going sideways again, right? Strong move down. We, we see it continue going lower but can't quite get through it. Once I see that double bottom, like I mentioned earlier, it's going to be a range at that point now. And now we look for that one try for the buyers, two try for the buyers. And once we see those 
buyers try once, once they try twice, then we start watching, right? Then we start watching for that move going back down to retest that low. So now we have a couple plans of attack right now, right? The first one obviously here is going to be a nice higher move, right? Two-legged pullback into a failure pattern, into a strength, into a pullback back down again. Looking for that two-legged pullback, that failure at the moving average and then of course right the sell off of the moving average with a target where first target right back down to retest that low second target right remember that remember that triple measured move that third leg lower that'll be your runner right for that move going right going lower if we go sideways here it's pretty easy for the sideways range right one try two try back down and start selling that second attempt right going back down into that range what if price keeps going lower here wouldn't surprise me one bit like i said we may we may see the continuation of this move as we come out of out of asia here watch the midline i left this midline on here for a reason if we keep going lower watch those lower lows watch those lower highs right and look for that area right there right Again, you'll notice anytime I have a bear market, my goal is always to sell at resistance, not selling at support. It's those small little adjustments in how you trade that will, well, you know, think of it this way. Look back at your results. If, if you were able to remove, let's just say two losses each week, what would that do? Would, would, that, would that dramatically impact your, it would for me. Right? If I could remove two, not even that many, right? I'm not trying to remove all the losses, but if you just have that simple mindset of selling at resistance in a bear market, it's gonna keep you from getting into trouble. That'll probably remove two, three, four, maybe even more losses this week, which then by default, right, by comparison person uh, purposes, makes it so much easier for you, right, to make money with the winners that you get, right? Finding winning trades is pretty easy. It's the losses, that's the, that's the tough part, right? Avoiding those losses. All right, so we're kind of waiting here to see what this thing wants to do. Now, one last thing, don't forget, this thing could easily jackknife higher too, right? Up, strength, pullback, strength. Don't be surprised. I'm telling you right now, I, again, it's not likely, but I will not be surprised one bit if we come in tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock Eastern time, and we see this thing is completely taken back, right, all those losses, and is pushing right up around that big round number, right, of 2,700, right, and making this a ball game, right? So don't be surprised about that there on the S&P. All right, from one E-mini over here to the next, a lot of this is going to be repeating myself here on the NASDAQ, so bear with me on this. NASDAQ is bearish two strong legs lower to finish today's session. And like all trend reversals, I'm marking up the lower lows, projecting off the highs, and looking for selling opportunities using a two-legged correction into that resistance area tomorrow morning. Another thing to watch for tomorrow is that possible trading range. Again, oftentimes these big moves in one day they end up going sideways right the following day. So as you can see here right now, a couple components here on the NASDAQ. First thing, we have a, uh, a key resistance trend line. Now, if you remember, that trend line made up a, a channel high on the S&P. So that's going to be one key difference here on that NASDAQ. At the same time, I'm taking these two highs, and that just seems to be pretty comfortable here off of those lows. And it looks like this is the channel that, at least for right now, the most eyeballs are focused on, right? So that channel becomes a really hot ticket here for a sell right back down. At the same time, right, measured move, one leg down. Anytime we see a strong move in one direction, we know price will likely go back to the moving average, retest the low, and then try to make a second leg lower. Don't forget, right, we can reverse engineer this now. If we know the size of that leg, if we pull back higher now, right, now I can project that for a third leg target 
right for tomorrow as well so a lot of the same components as we saw on the e-mini S&P but obviously a little bit different because right this is the Nasdaq right it's a little bit different market not a lot less liquid right than the S&P so it definitely moves right a lot more uh, aggressively sometimes you can feel that here today so what's my plan here right now well you know I don't want to sell the low right I want to sell the high so I've got this resistance trend line overhead I'd like to get up overhead, right, up around the highs of that challenge sell there. I'd love to incorporate a little trap up above that 51, right, 87 area. And ultimately, guys, I think this whole area right here, 51 and three quarters, combine that with, right, my, my trend line coming down. I think this makes for an excellent excellent battle zone there, you know, somewhere in this area, right? So, you know, for example, as we go, right, as we go higher here, hopefully we get a chance to incorporate that battle zone to, right, two-legged pullback, failure, strength, and then back down in, right? Wouldn't that be the ideal scenario? We've talked about that a few times, right? Two-legged pullback, failure, right, and of course the right the breakdown right and using that right that that moving average there as well so pretty easy there if we can get the price to go up right think of it this way look back in time look what happened here every time we went above the moving average today what happened they sold it back down so really simple price goes up above the moving average the bears have control this is not a bull market the bulls now try to buy the pullback right they're trying to reverse that trend but what do we know we know if this thing fails, we know that stops are sitting here. When the stops get triggered, bloodbath, right? It'll hit those stops. Buyers now become sellers. Don't sell that move right too low here. Wait to sell it now up at the moving average. And typically, right, you'll get in right about the same spot, right, that either you took the failure or waited for that pullback. So those will be some easy ways right, to sell as that price goes higher. If we start going lower, again, watch for a retest of that low and a bounce off of that low. If we see a bounce, that becomes double bottoms, right? Those double bottoms, obviously, at this point now, right, are telling me look for a range or trade it like a range. One try, two try. Would love to see a second try up around this trap area. Right, that will be a fantastic spot to be a seller as well. And then, what if we get price going lower again tomorrow? If price goes lower again without pulling back here, we have enough of a bounce here right now to project another leg lower. Right, so that will be again, if we don't go any higher here, right, look for that 62 for the six area, that'll be an easy target to the downside. Also, watch for a potential spike and channel. You know, kind of watch this midline, watch and see if it will continue kind of grinding lower there, right? Find those prior swings. And again, in a bear market, focus on selling at resistance. You would be amazed how often a market feels like it's never going to come back and let us in to sell at resistance. And sure enough, a few hours later, we get that beautiful correction and we get a chance to sell at resistance with a big, big reward and a small amount of risk. That's why professionals are professionals. They know that when they're not in a position to trade, they don't take the trade, right? When they are in a position, right, they're confident to pull the trigger because they know where they want to be getting in. If I can sell at an area where I can put a little bit of risk on with a lot of reward to get, that means success because everybody else will want to trade that area as well, and that will throw gasoline on the fire back to the downside. All right. Last one, or sorry, I'll say speaking of the downside here, the only market that's not bearish right now is this gold market. Gold is bullish. Not a huge surprise, right? After seeing cryptos tumble, right? Seeing the equity markets tumble, everything pretty much tumbled today. No surprise, gold, right, is taking the opposite side of that trade. So here we are, though. We're bullish. We're at the high of a channel. But the most important clue might be the trading range we found price action struggling within earlier in the day. You know, the bulls had a nice strong run to start today's session. They pulled back to allow buyers to buy low, and then they successfully retested the high. From there, however, the buyers are getting beat up, right? The buyers getting rejected. If you look where we are right now, you'll notice big wicks, right? Really kind of bouncing off the top of this, of this channel. And when you look closer at this, 
you'll notice the moving average. The moving average right now, the moving average at this point is never broken above this morning's high. What that tells us is, is that we don't have enough proof to be buying this high and we'll find more reliable buying opportunities down near the low of this range tomorrow morning. The key to this chart, the key to putting together the strategy, the key to identifying the most reliable trades for tomorrow is interpreting the story the market told us today. And the story says the buyers have control, but they're failing. They're struggling to show us proof to new highs. So rather than buying high, let's buy as low as possible, preferably down from the low of that range. So again, it's all about the story. And this is one of the things that I learned many, many years ago. And I'll tell you, once you learn to go back to the beginning of the chart, right? Here's a trick I use every day in our trade room, right? Start the session out. And what happens, right? Start, start going left, right? Start, start a little, you know, one kill at a time. Let it develop. Strong move higher, right? So a strong move higher. That strong move higher. What do we know about a strong move higher? We know we should pull back and retest the high. So what do we do? We pull back. Buyers try once. Buyers try twice. And they retest the high. Okay, so you see how the story plays out. It doesn't require any indicators for this. This is this just requires knowledge, right? Strong move up. What do we expect? Two-legged pullback and a retest of the high. If you watch my newsletter, this is I'm I'm, I'm, a, I'm a broken record, right? It happens over and over and over again. Well, now what are we looking for? Now that we go back to the high, what do we need to see right here? We need to see follow through. We need to see. For example, here to the bear side, strong move down, show me some follow through, right? Show me some follow through. The buyers got what they came for. They got the retest of the high. Now prove to me that you want higher prices. And see, this is where all hell breaks loose, right? Yeah, you can definitely see. Moving average, never, right? Moving average never makes it above that high. That's always an easy clue. But you can see, does this look like the buyers were, were, were confident going higher? Hell no, right? No way. For whatever reason, the buyers said, no, we are not interested in buying at this level right now, right? The buyers clearly showed interest buying low, right? No problems there to get back to retest the high. But once we get back to retest the high, that's when the real information comes in, right? So now, anytime we see rejection at the high of a range, strong move up, pulls back, retest the high right we see rejection off the high of this range what am i thinking right now one of two scenarios one find that prior low bring it down and buy off that low it's a trading range right anytime we see those double tops anytime in a bull market where the buyers aren't making new higher highs we have to assume they're still bullish this isn't bearish it's just they're not buying high nobody wants to buy that high so instead, what do we do? We buy low, right? We flip the script. We buy low. Now, second scenario, right? Second scenario would be, let's get that moving average up. Let's use that high, right? And let's get this thing. Draw one more time here. Bada bing. Bada boom. Get it up, right? And then we can be a buyer, right? So show me some proof. Show me you really want this, right? Because if you don't, I'm not going to buy that high, right? I don't want to buy high. I want to buy low. I want to buy at support. I need the buyers to give me a little bit more space up here so I can now buy at support, right? I can't buy at support back here, right? I can't buy at support at the high of the range. It just doesn't work that way. Okay, so now keep fast forwarding now. The only problem we have right now is that measured move, right? So now here we are caught up. Do you see how the story the market's telling us, right? That story, right, tells us exactly where now I want to buy low, right? Or we got to blast higher and then I can buy high from there, right? Or, you know, buy the pullback from there, okay? So what's my plan here? Well, we got that channel. Now, I am a little bit, there's a few different options in this channel. You can draw the channel like this, right? And that will fit, okay? But this little guy, right? there that wick right there is what i'm using you'll see it allows us to shave off all the bodies i like that for the top of this channel 
Okay, you'll learn about these types of tricks in our intermediate classes, finding the best fit for that channel. Sometimes we use bodies, sometimes we use the wick, right? How do you know? It all depends on the type of pattern you're seeing. This would be a channel, a spiking channel, right? So we know it's better drawn off the highs than drawn off the low. That now tells me where I have a level of support down here. The problem is, though, although I do want to buy at support here, that may be all we get tomorrow. The real, the real clue here, though, is that rejection off that high. And that tells me this trading range is the most important factor. So right now, we're simply rotating one try, two try. I want to get back down here and be a buyer off of that low tomorrow. The story telling us buy low, right? Buy low. We got a relatively aggressive chance to buy low off of this trend line, right? Little trap low below this 38.8. For me personally, though, I'd rather get this even lower. Get down below that low then there's plenty of space for a big target. You know, again, you always want to be thinking, where's the resistance level? Where am I going to have a hard time getting through? Make sure I'm a good distance away from that area to be a buyer here for tomorrow. Now, what if price goes higher here? That's the tough part, right? Price goes higher. We're going to measured move. This is not going to be easy as price goes higher, right? So if price goes higher, we get that measured move. One thing you want to remember is we almost always get a double test of a measured move. So if we get that measured move, moving average clears, two-legged pullback, right, and we'll look for the buy right there. But be very, very careful on that buy because if it collapses back into the range, this range, again, is key, right? We don't want to be buying into the top of that range. I'll wait and I'll buy at the low of that range, okay? Pretty easy there. And again, we got some prior levels overhead. If we keep cranking higher here, same thing. We'll just keep looking to use whatever support levels we can, right, to be a buyer from there. I just have to see some more strength going higher. Show me a little bit more here, Bulls. And again, what a great example here of that technique of, right, go back all the way, go back to the very first few candles of the day, and then listen to the story, right? What is the market story telling us? And if you know how to read the market psychology, like I went through right there with you, which you'll learn in the advanced classes and we'll hone in the trade room, right? You can put the plan together pretty easily there. You know, nothing special needed, right? Just a little bit of knowledge of how the markets really move. How about some euro wrapping up tonight? And it looks like I'm way past my time here. So I appreciate you sticking around with me all the way to the end. The euro is obviously bearish and we're testing the low of a channel as it tries to complete a measured move move and possibly retest the prior week low tomorrow morning. The bears are definitely in control and this bear move is really strong as you can see, but I don't want to sell into this support area. So my plan is to look for selling opportunities up around the highs of the channel tomorrow with targets at that measured move and at that prior week low. As you can see here, a lot of this is kind of the same stuff here. Um, I have I have here on this on this euro a couple components here, right? Obviously, strong move down. Anytime, excuse me. Anytime we see a strong move down, two-legged move, retest that low, and look what happened, right? Same thing, right? They got rejected, and what happens when they get rejected? The sellers come in, they go, all right, we'll sell high then, right? We'll find some resistance up here above that that range high, and we'll sell high. It's the exact same thing we're talking about on, on the gold right now. Well, sure enough, they sell high and we get that strong move through. That strong move through, you'll notice, now gets that moving average outside of that range, right? So now we're starting to see the proof we need. I'm going to connect these lows, right, up to that high. That does fit really well. The midline seems to fit like a glove right in the middle there. And so now we're looking for the sell up off of that, right, up off of that low. I have a reversal line here. I have the low of that range. I have that falling resistance. This area makes for a great spot. The one thing, though, is, as you'll notice, this is a trading range, right? So if we come back, right, we see this market sell off that, right, off that high, I'm looking good there for a sell. But if we end up going back in and holding, just be careful inside this range, one try, two try, and we'll focus on selling above the range, right? So just make sure you know where you are on this chart tomorrow after we get that pullback. What if price keeps going lower? You know, again, keep watching here, right? What if we keep going lower here? Watch out for a possible spike in channel. 
a lot of times the midline right becomes kind of the channel high of this right again don't sell at resistance right sell uh, sorry don't sell at support sell at resistance I don't want to sell into the measured move I want to sell off the measured move I want to use that measured move as a target right not as my entry so if the price keeps going going lower right look to sell it short also don't forget if we do get that measured move look for that two-legged pullback and do it again you'd be amazed how many times we see a measured move hit once bounces with a two-legged pullback and then collapses to do it again so watch those key levels of resistance remember what separates the rookies from the pros is that rookie well professional traders they know exactly where they want to be trading and they're not going to change their game plan just because it's taking longer than they want it to all right guys being a successful trader means knowing your strategy well but having the mindset the discipline to be able to follow that strategy when it's not quite doing what you want it to do in the short term all right guys don't forget how do we reverse you got it strength pull back strength I'm never surprised by reversals reversals happen all the time you just have to remember that most reversals fail right most of them do so if we do get back up right moving average comes over don't be so aggressive with the reversal right if they fail here right the seller is going to jump all over this and right back down to that low you got to go up strong move up hold the pullback right and strong move through hidden channel buy off that low target of course now is up to retest those highs all right, guys, boy, that time flew right by here tonight. I hope you guys found a ton of value on tonight's newsletter. You know what else is a great value as well? Our free trial. I think it's the best in the business. You're going to learn more on that free trial than you will anywhere else on the interwebs. I can guarantee you that. Plus, I'll shoot you a free pass. Come out and join me in the trade room. Grab that free trial on the homepage of schooltrade.com. I'll put all the links in the description of the YouTube video. If you're on the blog at sidewaysmarkets.com, right, it's over on the right right hand side of the page while you're here don't forget we got beginner intermediate and advanced classes and I'm always here to help with any questions you might have along the way hit me up on live support drop me a comment below the video feel free to post any questions in the comment section I always appreciate getting to getting to talk with you guys in the comment section and uh, what's your favorite thing about this newsletter right what what do you want me to do more give me some more information give me some feedback in the comment section if you're on YouTube right now what would you change and what would you do more of if you had control over this nightly newsletter? I would love to hear from you in the comment section below. Guys, my name is Joseph. Be well out there. Be nice to each other, will you? And be here tomorrow, 8 o'clock Eastern time in the trade room. And same time, same place tomorrow night on the nightly newsletter. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.